here to tell my daughter's story, Alex. Um, she died of heroin intoxication in 2013. I feel like we get a lot of signs from Alex. The auction was going to be on November 15th. That was like, oh my gosh, because that is her birthday and she will be 29. When Alex died, and, and whenever there is a death, it's so sudden and it's shocking. It affects everybody that loved that child, that person. You know, we're not the same people we used to be before Alex's death. Gianna doesn't have a mom. Her mom is gone from this earth forever. She is really nice. I wish she was still here. Please welcome the New York family. I want to thank Luke, first of all, for everything that he has done for our area. Okay. Um, and I would like to uh, thank him for letting me share Alex's story. I'd like to introduce my family. My husband, Steve, my daughter, Jamie, and my granddaughter, Gianna. Our daughter, Randy, couldn't be here tonight. She lives in Memphis, and Thanksgiving's next week, and she'll be here Tuesday. Um, our youngest daughter, Alex, she was 23. She died of heroin intoxication. Why? It shouldn't have happened. She had two older sisters that were good role models for her. Both went to college, started their careers after. Jamie, a legal administrative assistant for a major patent law firm in downtown Chicago, and Randy, an oncology nurse working at St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital in Memphis. Um, Alex's father is a civil engineer, and I'm a stay-at-home mom. And Alex and I played Monopoly after school all the time. We had dinners at home together all the time. We moved to Las Vegas when Alex was eight with my husband's work. In high school, things started to change. Alex started sneaking out and drinking with friends. And I feel her drinking started because of her lack of self-confidence and it made her feel more comfortable in her skin, I guess, around her friends. At some point, she met a boy her age, thought she was in love, and he led her down a very dark path. Her sneaking out turned into being gone for days. And as parents, we were worried, sick. We had never been through anything like that before with our first two daughters. We sent Alex to counseling, and they suggested the wilderness program in Utah for her, and she went. And then she went to an um, all-girls boarding school, therapeutic boarding school in Arizona for her junior year of high school. We could sleep again at night knowing our daughter was safe. While Alex was at boarding school, we found out the boy we were trying to keep her from had been making meth with his mother and had introduced Alex to meth. My husband took a job in California at that time, and I moved back to the Illinois Valley area. After all of this, when Alex was 18, she left to be with the boy anyway, and there was nothing we could really do. <clears throat> but when she was done with him, finally, she was done with him. She came back here to live with me. She was pregnant, and she did really well. She was a great mother. She went to IVCC. Um, wanting to be a nurse. She was on the honor roll. And in May 2010, when school was over, she had her wisdom teeth extracted. And I had no idea the pain medication she was prescribed would awaken her old demons. In 2010, I didn't even know what an opiate was. Alex started drinking excessively and started to spiral downward. <clears throat> in 2012, she went to rehab for 40 days and then to three different sober living houses in Chicago, only to get kicked out of all of them for using. Alex died on Father's Day, 2013. Autopsy report concluded she had alcohol and heroin in her system. And if heroin isn't bad enough, alcohol with any opiate or opioid is a deadly combination. Alex made the wrong choice way back in high school and paid for that choice with her life. And never and forever, 
two words that we use very frivolously in our culture, took on great new meaning after she was gone. I will never see my daughter again. Hear her voice, tell her I love her. She's gone from this earth forever. My daughter is gone from this earth forever. There will never be another picture taken of my daughter. I have gotten a few pictures of Alex that I had never seen before from her friends, and they are treasured gifts. One life, one death affects all that loved her. Like we said on the video, my husband and I will never be the same again. We're broken, we lost our baby. Alex's sister lost their little sister that they loved and adored. Jamie and Randy were 12 and nine when I had Alex. <clears throat> Jamie once said to me, this is my baby, you can have another one. <laughs> Randy was so upset that she was unable to come home when Alex died. Like I said, she lives in Memphis and gave birth to our first grandson on the day of Alex's wake. Gianna. Gianna had just recently turned four when her mama died. She really had no idea what death was. We tried to explain heaven to her. She asked if we could call her mama in heaven. No, we can't. After thinking for a while, she asked if we could go for a ride to heaven to see her mama. No, we can't. All she knew for sure was her mom had disappeared. And uh, several, several months, she went through a separation anxiety thinking I might disappear too because that's all she knew, her mom disappeared. Now Gianna's nine and knows fully well the finality of that death. This past year has been a tough one again with her missing her mom. She's heartbroken. We are all heartbroken. We are grieving parents raising a grieving granddaughter. And the questions, you are never ready for the questions, but they come out of nowhere, which shows her mama is always on her mind. We always answer Gianna's questions truthfully, but I never give her more information than she asks for. The older she gets, the tougher the questions are. But I want her to trust we will always be honest with her and tell her the truth. This past Halloween presented new tough questions. Even when Gianna's not talking about her mom, we know her mom is always on her mind. She'll be outside chalking on the driveway, drawing angels or drawing pictures, and one is always named Alex. Um, the children are trying to process what happened, but with limited knowledge because of their age, and we as adults know fully well what happened and still have a hard time processing it. Raising a child at our age comes with many challenges. We lost being a grandparent to Gianna. We have to parent her. We are busy again with school, homework, band, CCD, softball, swim practice, swim meets, or whatever else she's involved with at the time. We also have our own health issues, but I feel so fortunate, fortunate to have a piece of our daughter through her daughter. I wonder if, Gianna's, if Gianna was Alex's purpose, her gift to this world. We were also fortunate to be able to adopt Gianna. There are too many children today being raised without parents, being raised by grandparents or other relatives, too many children in foster care, too many babies born addicted. These kids were dealt a pretty crummy hand through no fault of their own. They need to understand none of this was their fault. They need to know they can rise from this and make great accomplishments. The last thing we want is for these children to be stigmatized. I spend too much time arguing with my daughter about her addiction. What that really was was fear. Fear of what could happen to her. I wanted my unaddicted child back. For those here tonight struggling with a loved one in active addiction, please show them compassion for their struggle. Always let them know they are loved the addicted can get so low that they hate themselves for the life they lost, for their loss of control over their addiction, for the hurt they have caused their loved ones. And then their behavior can become even more risky. Love them through their addiction. Love and compassion are key. In my opinion, tough love does not work. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Diana.